as the COVID losses are participants come up, I want to say how I experienced that critical period that Upo Chablan was talking about. Ne? Hey. So I learned in my mother tongue up until standard one. What's standard one? Grade? Grade three. Um, and then I went to an African school. Do you know I survived the whole year with just two phrases? Yeah, my fro. Yeah, my fro. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter what she was saying or what context. I just thought, what did I say last time? Was it, yeah, okay, yeah, my fro. So over to you guys. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, this panel, as you heard earlier, is focused on learning losses uh, during the COVID years 2020 and 2021, and, and in particular focusing on the responses to mitigate those losses. My name is Jamia Galant. I am an institutional researcher based at the University of Cape Town in the institutional planning department. But I was part of the team of researchers from the uh, RECEP, that is the Research on Socioeconomic Policy Center at Stellenbosch University, who did an analysis of learning losses of learners in the Western Cape based on the WCD, the Western Cape Education Department's annual systemic tests. Now these tests are written every year in maths and language by schools across all quintiles in the Western Cape in grades three, six, and nine, with about 90,000 learners writing each test. And I worked on the analysis of the mathematics results. And what we did was we compared performance of learners on the systemic tests uh, written in 2019 and then all again in 2021 because there were no systemic tests uh, in 2020 because of COVID. And because we half expected to see learning losses, our main interest in doing this analysis last year was to see how far has the 2021 cohort in a particular grade fallen behind the performance of the 2019 cohort of the same grade? So we compared performance only on test items that were the same in 2019 and 2021, and in schools that participated in both years. Now, as a starting point, it is worth reminding ourselves of the COVID context again. From the data gathered from the Western Cape schools that participated in the 2021 systemic tests, our estimate was that approximately 155 school days were lost on average over the two years, 2020 and 2021, due to national lockdowns as well as the rotational timetables uh, that happened in most schools. So 155 school days lost. That, that was real. And that was the, 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 the average. So looking at the results, the results did not therefore surprise us. But what was undoubtedly concerning was the scale of the last losses that we did see especially given that the 2019 baseline that we, we were now comparing 2021 with was itself not particularly high. So just to give you a flavor and an example of some of these, focusing only on the grade three mathematics, in 2019, 32% of learners did not pass the grade three mathematics uh, systemic test. So they didn't achieve 50% um, yet. And in 2021, this number increased to 47% of the grade three learners in the Western Cape who did not pass the maths test. In 2019, the average score on the grade three maths test was 60%, and this dropped to an average score of 51% in 2021. Now, digging down into the specific learning areas in grade three mathematics, the poor performance was even more stark. So, for example, for routine calculations, the average score dropped from 45% in 2019 to just 37% in 2021. And for measurement items, the average score dropped from a low 34% in 2019 to just 
26% in 2021. That is what learners were scoring for the measurement items. So the results suggest, firstly, to us that the low performance for routine calculations in grade three is likely an indicator of learners struggling to get to grips with the symbolic language of mathematics in grade three and understanding and applying the four basic operations. And the low performance in measurement is also a likely indicator of this lack of proficiency with routine operations and understanding number operations and relationships. And having looked in the study at the performance in the systemic tests across grade three, six, and nine, the results are illustrative of how learning losses are compounded as learners move up the grades, resulting in poorer and poorer performance. So the grade nine performance on the systemic tests is much worse than the grade three performance. And this underscores our understanding of the hierarchical knowledge structure and cumulative learning that characterizes mathematics. So while this study focused mainly, mainly on reporting performance on the WEC, the systemic tests, we did conclude with some recommendations that we thought could mitigate the losses we were seeing. And two of our primary recommendations were that the CAPS curriculum should be further trimmed from the RATPs uh, produced in 2020 and 21. And secondly, that more time should be allocated in the foundation phase timetable for teaching maths and reading. So with respect to the maths curriculum, we recommended that increasing the share of learning time dedicated particularly to the two learning areas, numbers, operations, and relationships, and measurement in a trimmed curriculum for both foundation phase and intermediate phase will likely set a much stronger foundation for learning in the senior phase. And this is where, in the panel today, we want to extend the conversation with the two panelists, which I have uh, sitting next to me, not to dwell on the losses, because I told you some, but it, it, it wouldn't be surprising, but rather to look at the responses, including how curriculum revision could contribute to helping us make up or overcome the learning losses and low performances we are seeing. So first up to my right is Shahida Jaffa. Shahida is a senior lecturer in mathematics education in the School of Education at UCT. And Shahida recently worked with a team of mathematics educators to review the 2021 RATPs for mathematics with a view to not only consider trimming of the curriculum, but also to contribute to a longer term process for strengthening CAPS. And Shahida will share the outcomes of this work. Uh, and I believe a link uh, to the full report will be shared with participants if, if not already. And then I'll just uh, introduce the second panelist, Benita uh, Gutham, mm -hmm. a former foundation phase teacher, foundation phase department head, and a foundation phase subject advisor. Benita is the chief education specialist for foundation phase maths in the DBE. And she will share the DBE de deliberations on curriculum trimming and strategies for mitigating learning losses during the COVID years. So we listen to both uh, of the panelists and then take um, uh, some discussion. And each of them have been given 10 minutes, which I'm going to time. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so what I did was to take the uh, grade three assessments across three assessments, which was the 2013 Annas, the Western Cape, Cape Systemic Test 2019 and 2020, and what one sees when you look at the three assessments, different cohorts, different times, the same pattern of performance um, across these different assessments. And if you just focus on the measurement, which in all three assessments is the weakest uh, content strand. So while these assessments, large scale uh, uh, data sets, give us some sense of the problems in the system, it doesn't actually provide any explanation for the poor underperformance. Okay, so our examination of the foundation phase RATPs revealed that the main vehicle for trimming the curriculum was achieved through integrating the content strands. Now, while integration of topics is always desirable, 
uh, it does um, create uh, 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 it, sorry, it does not reduce curriculum load in the first instance, and then it uh, actually creates greater complexity for teachers in terms of planning. So coming out of our uh, analysis of the RATPs and CAPS, uh, these are some of the recommendations, and I'm going to present for the different content strands. In the first um, instance is to talk about uh, absorbing the topics of counting objects um, and count forwards and count backwards into the number concept, uh, into topics that deal with number concept, because these are areas in which it is often the case that teachers spend a lot of time on road counting. So the second point was to de-link the topic of count forwards and um, count backwards from uh, patterns. Um, and this is a, a, uh, an issue with patterns that I'll come back to later. Uh, the third uh, point to note is that multiplication as repeated addition and division as sharing should be fully reviewed and revised so that these operations are treated as different to addition and multiplication. Um, multiplication and division as scaling operations need to be inserted to mitigate the dominance of arithmetic reason, uh, reasoning as evident in a, across a number of um, CAPS topics. And uh, there's greater detail on this particular point in our chapter two in the, uh, in the report. We also noticed that the, and this is not particular to the RATPs, but this is in CAPS as well, that there are a, a number of instances where the same topic is duplicated, and it gives the impression to teachers that um, the, the topics are different. So if you take the topic 1.7 addition and subtraction and 1.13 addition and, and subtraction, the first one, 1.7, deals with addition and subtraction in con uh, in a, in pro with contextual problems, and 1.13 deals with context-free um, calculations. This gives the impression for teachers that these are different topics and the probability that teachers are going to spend uh, additional time teaching the same concepts is highly likely. Uh, and there are a number of examples of this in the CAPS and the RATPs, and we're recommending that these should be merged. With regards to measurement, as noted earlier, in all of the assessments, measurement is the area that is uh, the weakest content strand across all the assessments. And what we're suggesting here is that there needs to be a careful mapping of the measurement concepts across uh, foundation phase and intermediate phase. The table gives an example of how this mapping could be achieved so that you don't have all these uh, attributes being taught at the same time in all of the grades, but rather gradually introduce the concepts to learners so that you can have time to consolidate the ideas. Um, the fourth uh, point about uh, measurement is that uh, the suggestion is to move the perimeter and area to grade four, uh, where it's currently in grade three. In relation to geometry, um, and our analysis of, the, analysis of the foundation phase and intermediate phase uh, geometry curriculum is that we found that it's very closely aligned to our natural spatial knowledge, the knowledge that we come into the world with that is innate, it's biologically endowed. And if you take, there are three of these spatial systems that we, that we come into the world with. The first one relates to navigation. Uh, we all have to move around in the world. Uh, and you can see the use of and the recruitment of na the navigation system in the curriculum topics, position, orientation, and views. Uh, the second uh, spatial cognitive system that we are um, endowed with is the object recognition system. And you can see the recruitment of this system in the uh, curriculum topics, 2D shapes, and 3D objects. Uh, the, the third aspect of our innate spatial knowledge is uh, our tendency as humans to see geometric re regularities. And this is um, unique to humans. And, and we see the recruitment of uh, geometric regularities in symmetry and uh, transformation geometry topics. So 
there's a close alignment between uh, our core uh, knowledge of geometry and this foundation phase and senior phase, uh, uh, foundation phase and intermediate phase geometry curricula. And this creates a disjuncture between uh, what happens in geometry in terms of intermediate phase and uh, uh, foundation phase and senior phase, which is much more closely aligned to Euclidean geometry. Now, it may not be possible to change what happens at intermediate phase, uh, but we can see why the, we have this rapid decline in performance as you move from grade three to grade nine uh, in terms of geometry. One of the issues picked up uh, in terms of our review is the tendency for learners to conflate angle and line, and this is, re is related to the way in which our navigation system works, because it uses direction rather than angle. Um, and so the recommendation that we're making is that one of the things that we could change in the intermediate phase curriculum is to in, uh, treat the notion of angle as that of rotation or turn, and this might help to mitigate the angle line conflation that we see uh, uh, learners um, using, which creates problems in senior phase and FET, uh, the FET curriculum. Further recommendations regarding uh, data handling and patterns, we're suggesting that we remove data handling from the GET uh, band. At present, within the RATPs, at foundation phase level, the suggestion there is to integrate data handling with the other content strands. And for the rest of the grades in the GET band, data handling is only um, left uh, to be done in grade six and grade seven. So therefore, it does not make sense to keep foundation phase in the, uh, sorry, uh, data handling in the foundation phase. Our next point relates to the way uh, patterns are dealt with. Uh, and here we see that there's limited progression if you look at patterns within the foundation phase, uh, across intermediate phase, and across senior phase. And so progression needs to be attended to. Uh, the efficacy of patterns as the route into algebra is, is questioned. Uh, this is what we've adopted in our South African curriculum, that we start in foundation phase with patterns, and this is meant to be the route into algebra. But if we look at the assessments, we see that there's massive failure at grade nine level in terms of geometry. And so the treatment of, of, of patterns in CAPS is, um, is uh, questioned. And we, what we see is a number of um, mathematical inconsistencies and faulty mathematical concepts that are derived directly from uh, patterns. What I want to do is to explore quickly how this happens with a, an example that comes from a, a, a young learner who's attempted a patterns problem. Um, so firstly, if one looks at the topic patterns, functions, and um, algebra, the topic includes the notion of functions, yet the notion of function remains implicit in much of the curriculum. It is only in grade 12 that students are meant to learn the formal definition of what a function is. I don't have time during this presentation to explain the consequences of the, the implicit notion of function in the lower grades, um, but uh, we could discuss this later. The next point I want to uh, draw your attention to is if you look at the task, the, what, the first question says that uh, complete the pattern. The second one says complete the number pattern. And this learner uh, got the first set of questions right, but the second question's wrong. Um, when uh, that, if you look at what, what the teacher has agreed to as correct in the first uh, uh, task, should be marked as correct in the second task. Um, so, th so there's a problem in the way in which uh, uh, patterns are conceived of. So I just want you to focus on the question relating to the arrows. Here you see uh, that the, what is the repeating unit is the set of the three, three arrows, but if you were to focus on each arrow as the term, then you could conceive as the fourth arrow in that sequence to be an up arrow. So what is the way in which uh, these kinds of tasks um, 
The confusion it creates is uh, it creates confusion in terms of what a mathematical term is. Because here, a term in the first set of tasks treats the repeating unit as a geometric mo uh, motif, the kinds of uh, motifs that you see in tiling patterns or wallpaper, for example. So uh, different to how a term is considered in mathematics. If we take the, uh, the problem 22, 24, 26, the expected answer is 28, 30, 32. Now, it, there is no mathematical necessity for the next term to be uh, 28. Um, and if we look at uh, what Anne Watson says about these kinds of pattern tasks, the role of guess the sequence rule tasks in the algebra curriculum should be reviewed. It is mathematically incorrect to state that the finite number of numerical terms indicates a unique uh, underlying generator. And our curriculum is dominated by these kinds of patterns. Okay, Jamie, I don't know how much I, how I've done in terms of time. Okay, a concluding slide. Um, the conclusion of this very, very brief um, uh, run through of a large document is that we're saying that trimming the curriculum will result in lessening curriculum load, but this is not going to solve the persistent learner failure. It might address the immediate concerns of learning losses due to COVID. Um, we recommend a thorough review of CAPS, accompanied by very focused research studies that attempts to uh, deal with some of what we've uh, picked up through our analysis, but there are other areas that could also be considered. Um, we, we do want to uh, um, uh, uh, suggest that rethinking our curriculum needs to consider the biological basis of how knowledge develops in humans. And people this morning did speak about the fact that we need to consider who the learner is and what this learner brings to the situation. Um, our tendency to use our natural cognitive cap capabilities is unsurprising and unavoidable. This, we do this because we are human. But what we come with naturally is not always appropriate for mathematics, as we see in the pattern example. Thanks, Jamia. Good afternoon, everybody, and thanks for the opportunity to come present to you on the COVID losses and the DBE responses. And just for the record, um, Jamie didn't indicate, I just want to say that, do not, um, okay, no, let me not go there yet. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Okay, so, yes, a huge, uh, the elephant is huge. Yeah. How are we going to break it down? That is the conundrum we're faced with. And I must indicate to you that um, it runs deep. It runs very deep, we come with the history, yes. okay, of not enjoying maths, let me put it to you that way rather, okay? And I always indicate that the teacher in the classroom, not all teachers have the affinity for mathematics. So we need to use kit gloves, I mean you support, support, support as much as we can. But we also need to come to the stage where we hold people accountable. Okay, that's my biggest gripe. Because a teacher gets paid to prepare a lesson and to make teaching happen in the classroom. Okay, for that learner. So my, I'm going to sprint through my PowerPoint but I'm gonna um, dig into some slides I'll go deeper in um, because you can read, you can understand, but I also want to indicate that, yes, we are busy, we have trimmed, the, we have revised the ATPs for 2022-2023, and the curriculum will be streamlined in 2025, okay? I've heard everything this morning, I've heard I've been party to the Western Cape systemic results, yes. I must indicate you that is high stake exams. It's even sometimes, in my opinion, worse than matrix. So I've been working there for 12 years as a DCS in the Western Cape. I need to indicate to you that I have not seen 
a question paper to do with the systemic in all the 12 years they been there, okay? And when I started off with the, with the um, um, systemic, we started off with just piloting in different cohorts, four different cohorts. The initial result was in the 30%, okay? And 2019, we were on the verge of that 60%. And we aimed to get it to 65 and then COVID came along. It took us 10 years back. That result you see today is going back to 2011. 2011, 2010, okay? So, okay, so what do we do as a country? And what do we do as a DBE when we see all of this um, learning losses and we realize the, okay, she said do that, okay? So the presentation outline will just include all of that. We'll talk about the, I'll just go through it so that you know, there were circulars to indicate that provinces must do their utmost to continue making learning happen during COVID, okay? And um, we have the losses and responses, I'll talk to that, the intended curriculum recovery, the taught curriculum, what was actually taught, and the learned curriculum, what did the learners actually learn, okay? Unfortunately, um, and then findings and the road ahead and a conclusion. So there's your circulars, which I'm just gonna go through quickly. The losses and the responses. We know teaching time was lost, and we have, a trimmed, we have trimmed ATPs, we have recovery ATPs, we have circulars that indicate that measures must be put in place so that teaching and lab learning can happen to the best of everybody's ability out there, and to hold hands, you know, that is what we lack in this country as well. We do not work as a, as a, a community to support learning in the classroom. We do, not, we do not lend a hand. And also too, I need to indicate that, we advocate that it needs to come from the home. It needs to come from the home. And I hear all the, the rumblings about the home language, etc., and how learners learn best. So I'm not gonna go there, but I'm saying if it's rooted in the home, if it's well established in the home, a child can learn from great R and continue with it. So watch this space. We will, we will um, work out, we will work, be working on something for parents as well, okay, as a country, to support parents in how to support their children at home, in the homes, with regards to emergent numeracy. So... Um, then the teaching and learning knowledge and the skills gaps noted. Now for that, like I say, that is huge because our teachers come from different universities, from different um, tertiary institutions, from distant learning, etc., where they have not had the, 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 the practical teaching experience, the practice teaching experience to support their classroom teaching at the moment, um, currently, okay? And a lot of our new teachers are also textbook teachers, okay? Because they, and they, and they love the fact, they love, give us, give us, give us a lesson plan so they can just read the lesson plan in the classroom, and that is not what should be happening, okay? A teacher, a good teacher must be grounded in mathematics and be able to, at the foundation phase level, and be able to understand it and be able to transfer that knowledge to the learner, okay? And I hear the deficit with regards to, I need you to say this, with regards to measurement. I'm asking and I keep on asking, what were the items based on measurement? Because measurement actually involves our practical mathematics, where practical maths happen and where children love to hold and handle things and they must. All the topics in measurement is your, your mass, your capacity, your... your um, mass capacity, your time, all of that, at all, length, it all involves concrete apparatus, it all involves the learners to get involved in it, to do it practically. So they hold and they feel first before they go on to number. Concrete objects first before they go on to number, okay? So bear that in mind, so I'm asking where, and I'm going to show you an example later, okay? I'm asking where is that, that the learners can't do measurement, and why is the big focus on that? How many items in that systemic test dealt with measurement? to quantify that statement, okay? Um, then the optimal teacher support, like I said, we developed currently 
Look, I only started the, DB, started at the DBE last year, August, during COVID, okay? And um, what we're currently doing is trying to capacitate the DCSs and the subject advisors to bring them up to scale so that they can support and guide do their role in the classroom because the subject advisor's job is to support and guide the teacher in the classroom, right? So we're working on that and we worked on mediation of the 2022, I'll show you, ATPs. So every year, 2022 at the beginning of the year, strengthen it a bit because we hear from the, from the ground what is needed, okay? So then it's distributed via the, via the um, the DCSs in the province, the coordinators in the province, and they pass it on to the teachers. But also, I must indicate to you that this year, in the June holidays, the DBE had had a, um, a teacher survey where they had thousands of teachers responding to the survey. And there are huge asks and huge gaps. So we take all of that and we try and impact the latest 2022-2023 ATP that was again revised, okay? So optimal support, opportunity of skilled teachers and, and assess needs, yes, upskilling DCSs and unpacking the concepts and the learning pathways for teachers. And now, before we had the opportunity in August to revise the current ATPs, but before that, I did a mediation session with teachers from the 1st of August to the 3rd of August, and I had about 8,712 teachers on the platform, and you'll hear what they say, what the needs are, okay? So we move on. COVID has but only magnified our problem and showed us, made us sit up straight and have a look at it, okay? It was there already. You can see the WCED systemic results show you that, show you that. The only problem I have is when it comes to um, teachers developing their own formal assessment task and teaching to the task because you see, when I look at the DBE triple D, the dashboard, and I see the results of the provinces, and I see, wow, at grade three level, they're getting their 60s and their 70s and their 80%. Then should we have problems? I'm asking should it be so deep rooted? Shouldn't be, okay? We should have numerate learners out there. We shouldn't have the results um, dropping from grade six, to, from grade three to grade six. When they get to grade six, they drop at 20%. And children are reluctant to do math up to. So what do we do up to matric? So what do we do? We had an intended curriculum. Oh, let me just put you there quickly. All these, um, all of this, this thing is not working. Anyway, all of these um, green goodies you see over there is the problem areas that teachers say we need support in that, okay? How do we get there? So the intended curriculum, go through it quickly. Uh, the recovery ATPs outlined in 2020 and 2023, paced, mediated, and supported. We gave them a management plan, we gave them a diagnostic assessment to do at the start of each and every term. A fresh diagnostic assessment was developed for them just to see where the learners are at and to recognize their teaching gaps and the learning gaps, okay? So now, and also look at what the DBE has, sure. Um, so the emphasis is on getting our teachers to do the concept teaching, to make the links, to practice, to afford multiple opportunity for learners to practice so that they can understand and master the work, okay? So that's what the classroom management plan looks like. Yes, and these are based on these principles. So we talk to teacher agency, to time on task, to collaborating. To, we talk about the CPA approach in the foundation phase, the concrete, the pictorial, and the, and the abstract, the diagnostic assessments, assessment at large, um, and also resources. And we also, everybody is singing the DBE workbook, but it's one resource that every child is afforded in the, in the whole country. So we make do and we try and um, support teachers in unpacking that, in doing the deep reading, in doing the critical and analytical reading. We have one policy document. We have one policy document. It requires critical 
analytical and inferential reading. You need to understand it and you need to see the links, okay? But it, it, that calls for another lens. So maybe we need to unpack it and to make it more simple. So monitoring went on. This, these were all our um, COVID losses. Oopsie. Um, with regards to um, NICT and did the MQA and provincial teams went into schools and had a look at the um, DBE workbooks and the exercise books in the classroom. And during these, this was the actual teaching days in 2020, but it didn't actually translate into that because a lot of teaching time was lost um, because of the foundation was going to school on a rotational basis. Okay, we all know that. I'm just going to go through that quickly. Have a look at your um, 89 actual teaching days from term two to term four. Actual grade three teaching days. Okay, I'm just going to go into the grade three quickly. Have a look at your, your content areas. Oopsie. With regards to uh, mathematics and look at the, the gaps there over there as well, and basically the DVE workbook was used because it is actually scripted as a resource to be used for consolidation purposes. It is not a teaching tool for consolidation purposes um, during the um, COVID times, okay, and in the ATPs it was scripted there. This was actually 2021's um, data. Have a look at traditional approach and the, the 52 um, days and the 47 and the rotational that led to 26, half of that and half of that are in term four. So basically, the teaching time was, there's more of the research that went in to show teachers, I'm going to say it here, teachers teach what they're comfortable with. So they will skip many pages in the workbook that they're not comfortable with because they, and they'll go to the simple activities to teach the children or to, to do rather, okay? And even with the caps as well, we see that there's no reading happening there, okay? With regards to the LIN curriculum, I want to show you the diagnostic, some of the diagnostic results that we put out there for the, um, for grades one to grade three. Now, if you look at, earlier the chat was about, um, the learners in grade one need to know five for the whole term, okay? We're only asking for deep teaching, we're asking to, for five to be anchored, and then we're asking for 10 to be anchored, and hopefully for the number system to be recognized and to see the patterns and to move from there, okay? But that requires deep teaching. What is deep teaching? Not all teachers understand that, okay? So have a look at the readiness test at grade one at the beginning of the year. Children come to school and they can count, and they know. So this was, these were the items, and everybody could count to, of the sample that we had that we tested, everybody could count five apples, okay? But the minute you gave them a sum, when you ask them a, a word problem, when you ask them, um, Peter has two sweets, Paul has five. How many more does Paul have? They couldn't do it. So what does that mean? Five is not anchored. Five is not, they don't know the numerosity, they don't know the muchness, they don't know five that well. But they can count. Have a look at um, the bonds here as well, where you'll see. And also, there's more of the um, up to five when it comes to doing the deep teaching, moving on to the, the number line as well and showing how it's done. And this is the one where they spoke about the um, sharing Sharing amongst four, an odd number, and coming up with a remainder. This is in the grade one DBE workbook. All these activities, and our learners couldn't do this. There's the CAPS reference. They couldn't solve problems in context, okay? So our learners were not able to do the one-to-one -one correspondence here and to do the um, sharing and the group, okay? So here's it in the DBE workbook. There's the page. So just imagine that teacher works with one of that little... Um, block boxes for the week and can extend it to what I have on the on your right hand side. Okay? For multiple and varied opportunity. So we try and do this type of thing with the subject advisors, with the DCSs, just to get them in that space as well. Because the only way I see we we're gonna um, move with this, we either retrain all our teachers or we do the through error analysis 
to show a different methodology and for, the, for teaching and for remediation. So we give them the diagnostic sheet where teachers can see. If I have question 19, if I have all that notes there, there's definitely a, a teaching gap, okay? I just wanted to go through this quickly just to show you. This is at grade three level. This is what the diagnostic is telling us. There's the sum where the measurement one, where they don't know time. Calendar, simple things, all from the DB workbook. This is what the teacher said on the first to the third, okay? This was grade two. There's a number of teachers. The highlighted rings at the bottom indicate where they need support in, what content areas are, and there's your grade three, same. Basically, grouping and sharing, number line, which is actually sad, and problem solving, okay? How do we get there? This was the teacher survey results that the DBE did in the June holidays, okay? To understand what is necessary, and that is why I did that mediation on first to third of thing of of um of august this is our reality in our country okay and now i just want to take you to the western cape 64 circuits one subject advisor per circuit max 30 schools in a circuit 25 to 30 schools in a circuit okay i can talk i've been there Okay, to support. But when you go to one, as a subject advisor, and you go to one poor performing school in Kayalicha, in Soweto, they might have about 30 foundation phase classes. 30, because there's about five of each or six of each. So how do you chew that elephant? Okay, we're done. I just want you to show you that's the reality we're sitting with. That's the stats of the mediation of the, of the provinces I did now with the new ATPs. Okay, there you have, that's still the evaluation on top there. That's a conclusion, I'll leave it there. Thank you. <laughs> you know, the, the one thing that despite the fact that Bonnie had to rush uh, through her slides, uh, it was illustrative of the amount of work that the DBE has done um, and they should be commended for the efforts that they have uh, done over the year 2020, 2021, 2022. They have not buried their heads in the sand. They've made an effort to try and do something. Um, some, of them, some of these things have worked. Some of them have not worked. But still, they, they, they need to be commended for being aware and conscious of the problem and committing to, to working towards that. Uh, I think perhaps we should ask Ingrid to share your full presentation uh, with sure. everybody and then perhaps the engagement directly uh, with Bonnie may be more um, fruitful than trying to rush something. Now, I think similarly with Shahida, I really recommend if the report does get shared uh, that you take the time to read it because, again, Shahida's presentation also was only kind of focused here on the recommendations uh, with respect to, to the, the curriculum trimming that they made, but it also has a lot of other kind of uh, analysis of the CAPS curriculum that points to broader issues for the revision uh, and strengthening more than anything else uh, of the CAPS mathematics curriculum. So thank you to everybody for your patience and thank you to our two panelists.